I'm Anissa Nowe from Moscow with a special edition of the show. A story never told, an atrocity against children, a cover-up and survivor's strength. Today, Canada's Duplessis orphans are in the now. This crime against children that almost no one knows about. It reportedly took place in Canada and lasted for two decades, starting in the 1940s. The atrocity bears the name of this man, Maurice Duplessis, the governor of Quebec at the time. His apparent corrupt deal with the Catholic Church opened a gruesome chapter in history. Canada is still refusing to acknowledge. 300,000 children became victims. Babies taken from young mothers or kids taken mainly from poor families by Catholic institutions. The majority of them were sold to childless families or on the black market. The price varied from $40 per baby up to $25,000. The rest, who bear the name of Duplessis orphans, were sent to psychiatric hospitals. Quebec authorities and Catholic orders receive government funding for each child treated in a psychiatric facility. Torture, slave labor, electroshock, beatings, drugs, sex abuse, lobotomies, these children were subjected to the worst things imaginable, while the government and the church made money. A lot of children died, and the way they were treated after death was no better. In 1999, a mass grave was discovered, six boxes with over 2,000 human remains. It was dubbed Pigsty Cemetery, located next to a pig farm which raised horrific speculation that pigs might have eaten some of the orphans' remains. Reports suggest dead children were also sold to medical schools for autopsies at $10 per body. I spoke to a survivor of this shocking policy, Duplessis orphan Clarina Duguay and her husband and activist Rod Vianneau. Rod, some horrific events unfolded decades ago in one of the most civilized countries and almost no one knows about it. We, my team, were shocked to discover this. How is that possible? Okay, uh, the first thing I must mention is that the, uh, the aging survivors still carry the false mentally retarded label, which is heavy on their shoulders. Uh, this hasn't been yet repaired, this, this, yet, uh, this hasn't yet been erased from their medical files. So what happened? The Duplessis Orphans case is a Canadian genocide. More than 100,000 uh, Duplessis orphans have disappeared or murdered. The Quebec hospitals were under the rule of the APA, the American Psychiatric Association, and the CIA. The Duplessis orphans were used as human guinea pigs for medical experimentations like MK Ultra. And uh, like you were saying, Every time that something came up that in the newspapers or television, uh, either the, uh, the media would ask the, uh, the cardinal, like Cardinal Jean-Claude Surcat, who just died not too long ago, uh, or uh, some uh, like the Minister of Justice. And the next day, uh, or they would answer right away, they would say, okay, uh, we will look into the case. And then the people in Quebec thinks, well, okay, these are authorities. They will look into the case, and but then it just goes silent, and it turns always into a massive cover-up. Clarina, this must be so difficult for you, but I have to ask you to please take us through what kind of experience you had as a Duplessis orphan. Moi, j'ai eu des uh, des bains d'eau glacée. En cause que je pleurais pour ma mère, je voulais m'en aller, je voulais pas rester là. Puis ils m'ont mis la camisole de force, puis ils m'ont mis sur des lignes de, de spring, ils m'ont ôté le matelas, puis ils m'ont couché sur des lignes de spring, les soeurs de la charité du Québec. Ils ont, ils ont torturé moi puis ma soeur, Simone Duguay. Ah, oui, la misère. I see, I see this is very hard for you. Um, if you're able to, tell us what it was like to live 
in a psychiatric hospital and not have oui. a mental illness? Ben moi, c'est parce que ma mère, euh, ils ont dit, ma mère, elle, elle, elle se mourait de tuberculose, puis mon père, mon père, il ne savait pas lire ni écrire, puis il se visait sur le prêtre, puis les, euh, le, le, curé, le, le curé du village, pour, puis le médecin, pour placer ses deux petites filles, à cause que la famille avait trop d'enfants, de, puis il dit, ils vont être bien placés dans un fina de Rimouski. Puis moi et ma soeur, moi j'ai resté deux ans là, les soeurs m'ont maltraité. Après ça, ils m'ont envoyé, quand j'avais eu 11 ans, ils m'ont envoyé dans un hôpital de psychiatrie parce qu'il y, y, y avait besoin des filles pour euh, faire, euh, le, les orphelins, faire, faire des choses, euh, laver les planchers, puis euh, tout, la, la, laver la, les affaires de la cuisine. Là. Mais euh, moi, je voulais pas parce que je pleurais pour ma mère. Puis je voulais y trouver ma mère. Puis là, quand, quand ça, la religieuse, le soir, elle m'a barqué dans, dans un bain de l'eau glacée. Puis après ça, m'a mis la camisole de force. En gros, je pleurais trop pour ma mère. Je voulais m'en aller chez nous. C'est pour ça qu'ils m'ont torturé. <rire> It's absolutely, absolutely Pardon understandable. You, t you take a break with us. Thank you so much for sharing our story. I do know it's difficult. Rod, I understand that when you two met, you had no idea what Clarina had lived through. Tell us about how you discovered her story. Yes, uh, we were married uh, for 25 years. And uh, when this came out here in the 19, uh, 1991, 1992, and this was splashing all over the, uh, the, uh, the media, television, newspapers and everything, uh, one day my wife says, she says, I am one of them. And I said, one of them who? And she says, what, they were, what, what is talking? They're talking about the Duplessis orphans. She says, I'm one of them. And from that day on, you know, we had a hard time, uh, the whole family. And then after that, I, I decided I was just going to try and get um, justice for her and, uh, and for her sister Simone. And uh, I decided, and when, when checking out the case, there was uh, 20 more in my in my city, in my little uh, city, Joliet, there was 20 more of the orphans. And I noticed a lot of them were digging in the garbage cans and everything to pick up pop bottles, uh, bottles and cans to sell. Uh, kids that have got no education, never had education, and uh, they were cruelly tortured. And uh, my wife was sexually abused by one of the nuns. And uh, and she was saying that they had strapped her on a steel bed with a collar around her neck and uh, ice cold bats. And this was the, the same and worse for a lot of them. Because we have the Quebec Ombudsman, uh, Daniel Jacoby, who stated right in Parliament, he stated that the orphans were tortured and they were chained and whipped ice cold bats, sexually abused, sodomized, straitjacket, put in cells for years, and uh, experimental drugs, uh, you name it. They've, do they've done everything to these defenseless children. Why, and, why uh, has no one been held to real accountability, the Catholic Church, the government, with all the information that we have? Uh, because, ma'am, there was there's so many, and still today, some are still alive. So many high-ranking people uh, that were mixed into this here: doctors, uh, ministers of uh, uh, the, the Catholic Church, people in government, in Parliament, were mixed into this here. Uh, if you don't mind, I can name some and I don't mind. I can, uh, uh, like uh, the one premier of, uh, of Quebec, uh, Jacques Parizeau, and then come along premier Lucien Bouchard, who's still living, and then another premier, Bernard Landry, who's still living, 
and they are mixed into this case here. And then you got a minister, uh, minister of justice, Paul Bejan. And uh, yeah, so they colluded, uh, they, there was a, a, together, collusion, corruption. What about the and, Catholic uh, Church, you know, Rod? So what is the Catholic Church in Quebec had to say to these accusations? Uh, they, they are staying silent. There's, every time someone spoke to them, they just said, the orphans do not deserve any, uh, any acknowledgments, no excuses, nothing, nothing, no pardon, nothing. Because the Catholic Church had received from Morris Duplessis, the premier, <coughs> a full, uh, they had full control of the education, uh, hospitals, schools, orphanages, everything. And uh, they, because the premier had found out that, uh, you know, he mentioned one day, he found out that the government of Canada, the federal government, was paying $2.50 per head per day for an, uh, a patient in a psychiatric hospital. So he decided to mention one day, the premier did, that, they, uh, that Quebec had no more money that for uh, orphans in an orphanage, which they were paying 70 cents ahead per day so he gave the, the power to the church and they just started emptying all the places every place imagine it, imagine it, uh, and uh, and they just started filling all the psychiatric hospitals to be able to get this two dollars and fifty cents from the federal government what about the vatican i understand in your activism you've obviously tried to contact them tried to get response from them have they commented yeah uh, Jonathan Levy from uh, lawyer attorney uh, attorney uh, Jonathan Levy had uh, started writing letters uh, he started getting a word from them there was a communication and, uh, and uh, from them and then all of a sudden there was one letter st stating uh, could you give us please uh, a, a delay of time I think it was somewhere like that year uh, till the 15th of October and uh, so it was giving them like a, a two or three month delay and they said they would get back to him but then all of a sudden we noticed that uh, the ex-cardinal Jean-Claude Sucut of Montreal who deceased not too long ago and Cardinal Marc Wallet of Quebec were they took off to Rome so they uh, so maybe the Vatican I probably the Vatican must have said okay what is this that, who is the duplicity orphans so they were called in over there to talk about this and they must have told the uh, the the, uh, uh, the Pope forget it don't write no more nothing just stay silent when we come back, we hear more about the fight for justice for Canada's Duplessis orphans. Stay in the now. Marine Le Pen has a sort of problematic claims in what she claims for, which is leaving the euro, which is anti-Muslim, which is, uh, I mean, also the father was even more problematic. It's a clear radical party uh, about uh, xenophobism and so on and so forth. So we should be concerned if the biggest partner country of Germany, which is the classical Franco-German tandem, is now infected uh, to such a degree by populist vote. It's really sort of infiltrating into the middle classes. And I think that is a European problem also, because we cannot look at France in an isolated way. Самое главное страх перед человеком. Если этого нет, выпускать медвежат на волю нельзя. Не бойся, медведя там нет. Иди, забери медвежа. Выскочил медведь, кинулась прям под ноги, не хватило буквально нескольких сантиметров.
You're in the now, and today our special on Canada's Duplessis orphans. Now we hear how one woman managed to run away from a childhood hell created for her by the Catholic Church. I want to ask you about your escape. How did you manage to get out of there alive? Oh, c'est ma soeur qui a, elle a été, tra elle a été à, à l'école euh, ménagère, puis de là, elle se sauver dans un train. Puis quand elle est arrivée chez nous à Gaspésie, elle a dit à mon père puis à ma famille de, de, que j'étais dans une hôpital psychiatrie de sortir ma soeur vite, parce que là, ça faisait... Moi, j'ai rentré à l'âge de 11 ans, je suis sortie là à 17 ans et demi, c'est grâce à ma soeur qui a déserté, qui a, qui a pu me sortir de là à l'hôpital psychiatrie. C'est mon père et euh, mon oncle qui euh, il a écrit une lettre aux religieuses. Puis les religieuses, la supérieure, m'a dit de me préparer, qui m'a qu renvoyé sur le train. Puis rendu sur mon oncle Oliam, c'est là que j'étais contente de sortir de là. Je n'étais plus capable. J'avais trop de souffrance, je souffrais trop. J'étais heureuse que j'étais partie de là. Sinon, là, si ma soeur n'aurait pas déserté, je serais encore là aujourd'hui. Tell us a little bit about the years after, before your husband found out, and that moment when you escaped. I mean, what is it like to live the life after being a Duplessis orphan? Ben moi, quand j'ai rencontré euh, euh, Rod, euh, j'ai euh, tombé en amour avec lui. Mais tu avant ça. Parti quand arrivé en Gaspésie. Ah, okay, jusque, okay. Quand j'ai arrivé à Gaspésie, ben là, j'ai resté sur une de mes tantes. Et puis là, j'ai commencé à faire du ménage là. Puis j'ai dit à ma tante, moi, quand je vois pas ni 18 ans, je m'en vais à Turner, travailler sur une madame, Louis Rail. Et de là, ben, j'ai resté deux ans là. Puis là, j'ai pris le bord de Montréal. Puis là, j'ai commencé à travailler des manufactures. Puis dans les machines à boutons, machines à boutonnières, c'est rien que ça que je pouvais faire. Je n'étais pas instruite, je n'avais pas l'instruction. Puis moi, mon rêve, c'était hôtesse de l'air. Puis j'ai jamais eu l'instruction, j'ai arrivé ça face à Dieu. C'était mon rêve à moi. Puis je n'ai pas réussi en cause, je n'avais pas l'instruction. Puis à Montréal, c'est là qu'après ça, quand au bout d'un an ou deux, j'ai rencontré M. Viano, mon mari. Là. Puis c'est là que ça a commencé, là. Mais jamais, jamais je n'ai parlé à mon mari de les choses qui a passé dans mon enfance. Jamais. Puis quand ça, ça, quand ça avait sorti à la télévision, j'ai dit « Oh non, c'est pas vrai. » J'ai dit « Comment je vais faire ça à dire à mes enfants? » Parce que j'ai eu six enfants, puis je savais pas comment le dire à mes enfants. Puis quand ça a sorti à la télévision, j'ai dit à mon mari « Il faut que je leur dise à mes enfants. » Parce qu'ils vont dire « Sa mère, ma mère a été dans une petite psychiatrie, ça n'a pas de bon sens. » Fait que j'ai eu de la misère à expliquer à mes enfants. C'était dur pour moi, madame. But you did do it. Your children do know now. Bon moral, puis j'ai pu traverser ce chemin-là, madame. Mais quand, quand je les ai appelés, mes enfants, je voulais leur parler, leur expliquer que pourquoi que j'avais été dans une hôpital de psychiatrie, parce qu'à la télévision, ça avait sorti à la télévision, puis j'ai dit oh, « non, c'est pas vrai ». J'ai dit, comment je vais faire pour dire ça à mes enfants? Puis quand j'ai appelé mes enfants, je les ai mis autour de la table, j'ai réexpliqué tout ce qui m'est arrivé, puis tout ça. Puis un euh, de mes enfants, ils n'ont pas été mes soeurs. Ils disent, maman, ils sont méchants, les religieux, dans vos fêtes, ça à vous, et tu ne méritais pas ça. Puis j'ai eu de la misère à les expliquer. Il fallait que je leur dise, parce que manière d'une autre, ils l'auraient su pareil en, en, en passant à la télévision. Il fallait qu'on qu qu passe devant, devant les, 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 les journalistes pour expliquer no, 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 notre affaire quand on est arrivé, toutes les orphelins ont fait du plaisir. Il fallait rencontrer les, euh, les journalistes et compter un peu notre histoire. J'ai dit, mon temps à leur expliquer avant qu'ils sachent par d'autres. So journalists in Canada, Rod, were initially interested in the story once it was uncovered, let's say, in the 1990s. Is that correct? Yes, they were, yes. Every one of them, yeah. And then all of a sudden, not so interested. Well, they were told. They were told, uh, I'm just going to mention something. Uh, there's a woman uh, that we know. Uh, she stays maybe 25 miles from where we stay. And uh, she, uh, somebody broke into her house, and she's in a wheelchair. 
and she was in the same hospital as my wife, Clarina. And uh, <clears throat> so the uh, television, she got in contact with the television, and, and she said to them, get in touch with Rod Vienno, and, uh, you know, he will explain uh, more and this and that. So anyway, this, this criminal guy, this guy who works on criminal stories, uh, from the television, called me this uh, uh, maybe a few minutes before the uh, the interview started, and he said, uh, "Rod, he said, listen, you uh, the only thing the uh, were authorization we're uh, going to authorize that you can mention that uh, Noella Dusset is a Duplessy orphan, and that's it." He said, "If you say just one word." Other than that, he says the television the television will close down, and this is this is a huge television station, major. Have you ever been so contacted by? So this is what we're fighting against. The government. I met every I think every premier, everyone. I have documentations. I've got pictures, uh, uh, newspapers, uh, whatever, stories. I wrote over thousands and thousands of letters throughout Canada to every Premier of Canada, the Premier of uh, Canada, all his staff members, the ones in Quebec. I've met so many uh, ministers of parliament face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, and each one of them seems uh, you know, they listen to the story, and this is it. They just don't go further in this, because <clears throat> I believe, and uh, you know, like Canada has been pointing fingers all over the world, that this country is like this, and this country is there, and this is going on there. But if we lift the, the carpet here in, que in Canada, in Quebec, about this case here, which is a Canadian Quebec genocide of 100,000 orphans who disappeared, probably all murdered. And we have also, we have o just Bordeaux jail in Montreal, over a thousand orphans, children. They were locked up. They were so greedy for this money, for federal funds. Not only that uh, in a Bordeaux jail that they had these kids there, but they opened up hospitals across, and they were, they were the proprietors across the United States. Massachusetts, the Bronx, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, they had hospitals everywhere. And they were the sole owners, and they were transfer illegally transporting uh, thousands upon thousands of innocent children across the U.S. border. And it was so easy at the time because of their, their robe, the nun's robe that they were, uh, that they were wearing. And to the officers at the border, well, you know, they, they cannot commit crimes. They, they represent goodness, you know? So, uh, yeah, and uh, like Karina, Karina was saying a while ago, uh, the doctor from her little village and the priest, uh, yeah, and when they, uh, they transferred her and Simone to an orphanage, and you know, like the father could not read or write, and he signed with an X, uh, and they told him, your children are gonna be well looked after, get a good education, but this was not so. And then in order to transfer both of them to a psychiatric hospital, they made up this uh, collusion that her mother was a psychiatric patient in another hospital and she had died two they they, uh, they buried her two years before her real death her mother died at the age of 31 years old in a in a, a place close to her home and we have all the documents she died in 1946 but the nuns had made up this mystery grave we don't know we've been there to that hospital and they're you know they're so uh they're afraid they we i took a picture even of the grave site and everything and this came out in the montreal gazette it hit the pro, uh, the front page there's huge page uh, it was inside about the mystery grave we would like to know who's buried in that grave and we would like uh dna testing done in her in her mom's uh, grave the government in, in, uh, of Quebec in 1992 
uh, they decided to, uh, they asked for a police inquiry into this case. All right. I think they must have thought that there was nothing, but this would uh, put the people to sleep and, and, uh, and put the people to ease. So 1992, the police uh, went around uh, interviewing. They interviewed 240 Duplicy orphans, girls and, uh, and boys. All right. From this, they accumulated 321 criminal accusations. And I asked myself, the two police, and I have their name and their numbers, and uh, I asked them if they were going to see all the Duplicy orphans. They said, no, we finish right now. We have 240 and we have 321 criminal accusations. They said, once we deposit this at the Crown Prosecutor's Office in Quebec, this will be like a bomb that hit the province of Quebec. But it didn't do nothing, because this is where the Minister of Justice, Paul Bejan, got a bunch of Crown Prosecutors and they started into this case. Nobody, everybody thought the public figured that everything was going on, everything okay. And then all of a sudden, Paul Beja in the uh, on the 24th of February, 1995, he stated that a slap behind the head and twisting of an ear is not uh, a criminal act. But we're not talking about this. <clears throat> We're talking about children that were tortured, that were kidnapped, that were put into cells. And I was astonished and so surprised to see the buildings that they're building all around. They want to hide so much the, uh, the, 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 the cemetery where the orphans, where a mass gravesite is. But there is still a place that somebody could dig because they found, workers found over 2,000 skeleton bodies this has got to be looked into and we need help clarina just finally i want to ask you what do you want to see happen in terms of accountability ben qui reçoit justice puis réparation madame pas pas des miettes des réparations comme du monde puis euh, des excuses bien qu'on faut pas pas des de, de miettes de pain on va avoir des excuses puis une uh, réparation. Je ne sais pas si je le dis bien, non? Uh, <coughs> Madame, uh, the Duplicy Orphans, they've got to erase hmm. the, from their medical files the, the false mentally retarded label. The government of Canada, who was mixed into this here, the Catholic Church, the College of uh, Physicians of Quebec, and the government of Quebec, they must repair this to these children and uh, they must repair in the right way and because these children here had their lives stolen they could have been lawyers they could have been doctors they could have been anybody but they didn't have this chance without no education and they're still carrying this heavy on their shoulders this mentally retarded label they've got to repair this case in a good way all right, Rod Vianou and his wife, Clarina Duguay, of course, who was a Duplessis orphan. Thank you both so much for telling your story. Clarina, I want to say your story is heartbreaking, but your strength is so much more powerful. Thank you so much for being in the now, both of you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. We contacted the Canadian Prime Minister's office and asked them to comment on the allegations and claims of this horrendous crime, but so far, nothing. Let's hope that justice prevails and you do your part in trying to help tell this dark side of history so it's never forgotten. Use the hashtag DOJustice and spread this story with your comments. It's now or never.